Hello? Have you tried your cider yet? No. <laughs> I need to make this thing taller. What? Cheers. What the <laughs> fuck? You guys, as you can see, we're in London. We are lucky enough to be recording at this amazing little bar called The Vault of 1894. Shout out to George for hooking it up. Yeah, George. Um, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. I just, this feels so surreal to be recording an episode in London. And then the second half will be coming at you from Iceland. It does feel interesting. It doesn't really feel like we're here, but also. No, I'm so jet lagged. It's, yeah. It, like, it kind feels, of fogged. Yeah. But it is a cool little spot. This bar is tucked in under the bridge. It's got its little spot right under the towers. It like that's prime real estate. It's incredible. Like it's incredible. And, and they have a cider for us. And they have a <laughs> cider. It's incredible. It tastes amazing. I have good stories. Our trip so far has been unreal. Justin and I, I like, f I found some points hack on TikTok. So I bought our regular plane tickets to come here and then paid an extra $500 for points to be put on the upgrade list. Well, it worked thanks TikTok hacks. And we got upgraded to the little pods on the way here. So we like laid down on the flight. It was, it's not something I've ever experienced. Like I'm, I'm usually traveling in peasant mode. So that was, that was absolute insanity too. Yeah. Also fun fact. Yeah. London is where I kind of discovered cider, hard cider. Yeah. And fell in love with it studying abroad here. And uh, slowly but surely, it started to become more popular in the U.S. And then that's why now we have our favorite breweries back in Minnesota and all of that. But this is the birthplace of it, honestly, for me. And I love that I every love that. time you get a cider, and I'm sure it's the same with beer, you always get it in the correct glass. So it's always served in the brand of the oh. cider with the, with the matching glass. Wow. Yeah. I Thank you for that fact. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, this week's theme is jaw dropping. It's kind of how I feel about this whole trip. I'm just like in awe of everything jaw dropped and sounds of the city. Sounds of the city. I think we're being kind of inconspicuous. Yeah, like we're, we're not drawing. We're not. This isn't like some big production sitting no, here. But no, 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 no. Well, most people aren't even realizing. No, oh, I mean we're getting some funky looks as people walk by, but but pretty it's low fine. key, you know. We're chilling. It's fine. Yeah, I'll accept it. Um, but this week's theme: jaw dropping because my jaw was on the floor reading these stories, and I have a feeling it's going to be I, like that the rest of this trip. Yeah, true. I think I'm going to be a little unfazed though. Because I'm already so fogged out that you think I so? honestly think I'm going to be chilling. Yeah, let's okay. go. Okay, okay. Let's dive in. <laughs> okay, up first. Kind of a few updates for this one. I'm full of regrets believing that my husband cheated on me when he didn't. Cheating is something that I've always had strong opinions about. I've Same. been cheated on before and it sucked. Everyone knows that I don't forgive cheaters. So when my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, staged an elaborate scheme about my husband cheating, I ended the relationship. My relationship, unfortunately, wasn't the only one that was affected. My sister-in-law, Lisa, 32, her best friend, Emma, 32, and my husband, Jamie, 29, were best friends growing up. Emma got married when she was just 20. Her husband was abusive. She had two children with him. She got divorced 10 years later and she was finally free from his abuse. She suffered a lot, however, and was, probably still is, in therapy, her and her children. I, 30, met Jamie four years ago. We got married two years later. Everything was just awesome. What I didn't know was that Emma wanted Jamie and Lisa made it her mission when Emma finally got divorced to bring her brother and best friend together. I didn't know any of this, so I never knew there was a hidden agenda. When I, a few months into my marriage, overheard Lisa talking about how Jamie was cheating on me with a married colleague of his. In hindsight, I can tell it was staged because she was saying unnecessary details and was very loud. She meant for me to hear it. I confronted her then and there, and she played very flustered and apologized and begged me not to ruin my marriage. She told me Jamie loved me and she never wanted to lose me as a sister. But at the same time, she provided me with pictures and texts. 
They were all photoshopped of my husband and his colleague. She begged me not to mention where I found out and I was grateful for her support and promised her not to expose her as the source. I confronted my husband with everything and he adamantly refused to admit anything. It hurt me more that he never admitted nor apologized ever. He asked me where I got this from, but I kept my promise and told him it was an anonymous tip. I also went so far that I contacted the colleague's husband. At the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. The colleague is this very beautiful woman that my husband worked very closely with many hours a day. I was a bit jealous of that and I confided my fears with Lisa. She used it against me. I asked for a divorce and the colleague's husband did too. After that, Lisa, who I thought was my friend, who called me her sister, disappeared from my life. Like I never existed. Even when I bumped into her, she was short with me and indifferent. Months went by and I was still heartbroken processing the separation. My husband stopped trying to make me see reason and agreed to divorce. He said he wanted to move on. I started having doubts. Why is Lisa doing this now? She was my friend and wanted the best for me, yet now she didn't even answer my texts. I follow both her and Emma on Instagram and I started seeing how Emma and my husband gradually started hanging out. At least once a week, Emma or Lisa shared stories about my husband with Emma and her children. What I did next is very questionable, and yet I don't regret it at all. I was desperate, and I needed the truth. I was still very good friends with Lisa's on-again, off-again boyfriend, Mike, sister. I told her my doubts and everything. I told her that Lisa was my source, that my husband was cheating, and that I'm starting to doubt everything, and that I needed their help to unearth the truth. Mike was easier to persuade to help me than I expected. He had Lisa's passcode, and he went through her messages with Emma, and there was everything. They have plotted everything. They used my idiocy and insecurity and made me throw the best thing that ever happened to me away. He sent me all the proof I needed, even the original photos they used to Photoshop my husband with his colleague. My world was turned upside down again and I went into a deeper depression. I stayed in bed, called in sick for two weeks. I have not ruined only my life, but also another family. I don't know why I'm writing here, if I want advice or just to vent. I don't blame anyone but my stupidity for ruining my marriage. I should have trusted my husband and the love he's shown me. I should have been honest with him about everything and where I got the news that he was cheating from. I should have not gone to hurt the colleague and her family just because I thought her beautiful. She has since quit her job and moved, but I still had her husband's contact info. I had to at least apologize. We met and I told him everything. He was so angry with me. He was crying and yelling at me. And all I could think was that I deserved every insult he threw my way. I found the colleague on Instagram and DM'd her everything and a long apology. She didn't answer me. I don't know if I should tell my husband too. I know I don't deserve him at all. And I know that he doesn't want me anymore. But maybe he should just know what Emma is doing and what she's capable of doing. He deserves to know the truth. Maybe I could start with reassuring him that I'm not trying to win him back. I'm just trying to help him understand and apologize. I need to apologize for everything. I don't know. The sister must really not have a lot going on in her life to so badly want a relationship for her brother. Like that would break up his, to go to these lengths. It's really psychotic. to Photoshop. This person's bored, literally has nothing to do. Like, how do you have this much time to focus on someone and you have this much care? What must be going wrong in your life to have this much care to want to like go and destroy this whole thing because well not just one person's marriage but two because the colleague the the colleague that was in that pictures the pictures that they photoshopped op went to her husband oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so she <laughs> she broke up two marriages she ruined two people's lives uh, by doing this which makes me wonder like what does this friend have on you why are you so obsessed with your friend and the idea of your friend and your brother getting together? What if they get divorced? Like, what if they didn't work out? That becomes messy for your brother and your friend it's, in your life. It's just very strange. This it's is like so beyond, crazy. this is, you know how sometimes not sympathize, not even empathize, but to like try to get your head in a place where you can think like this. This is just beyond me. I don't even know. Like I, I don't know. I think it's if you really have that much time and that much care about something, this this is you got some problems. She needs a hobby. Okay, update. Okay. I'm full of regrets believing that my husband cheated on me when he didn't. 
Hi, have now an update. Thank you for being so supportive. I honestly didn't expect that given how long and boring my story was. It was not long and boring at all. It was long. It was long, but not boring. <laughs> I remember being so desperate and wanting to tell everything from the beginning and put it out there. Maybe to try and make excuses for myself and for what I did. I appreciate you wanted to help. I decided not to meet up with Jamie. Every time I tried to text him and ask for a meeting, I panic. That wasn't a good sign at all. I wanted him to know everything in details and I tend to be all over the place when I'm panicking. So I decided to email him instead. I made a lot of drafts, cross-checked all the information and waited a whole day before sending, adding some details here and there that I've forgotten to include. I sent him all the manipulated pictures and the original. Every screenshot Mike sent me from Lisa and Emma's conversations. I made it clear, however, that I wasn't trying to manipulate him to have me back because I knew what I did was unforgivable, but that I wanted to warn him who he's been dealing with. I told him that I've been watching Emma and Lisa's Instagram stories, and I've seen that he was getting cozier with Emma. I wanted him to know all the facts if he was dating her. This took all my energy to write this. Just the thought of him dating Emma, I mean, I can't. I texted him that I've sent him an important email. He didn't answer me. On Wednesday, when I came back from work, Lisa, Emma, and Emma's two children were waiting for me outside of my building. When I let them in, stupid, stupid me, Lisa started yelling and threatening me. She told me to call and tell Jamie and Mike that I've made all of this up because I'm a pathetic loser. She told me I didn't want her as an enemy because she would make my life sour believe me. You don't want to make destroying your already miserable life my mission. Emma just smiled the whole time. She later said that my husband already had a crush on her and that he wouldn't believe my nonsense because he could finally be with her. The thing is, it felt like Lisa was more angry that Mike knew what she did rather than her brother. And she was really annoyed about Emma and told her to shut up the whole time. I couldn't get them out of my apartment, so I just left and called Jamie. I told him that they were at my place and that I couldn't get them out. 15 minutes later, I saw them leave. Jamie texted then that he wanted to come over if I was all right with it. Yes. Um, really quick. Yeah. So Emma was in on it. Emma was in on it the whole time. Emma was a part of it from the start. Emma was probably, Emma was probably egging her friend on, which is the brother's sister. So she was in on it. Absolutely. Emma oh, wants the husband. I thought you were saying that the sister was the only one kind of doing this whole thing the whole time. No. And that's why I got really confused because I'm like, well, you broke up the... Sorry. <laughs> you broke up the Emma marriage too, but she was She willing. was divorced. She was divorced from an abusive husband. Right. Okay. Sorry, friends. Get it together, Justin. Well, come on. Come on. Get it together. I'm supposed to be sleeping right now, technically. Jet, but jet lag is no excuse. <laughs> okay got it so then that's why emma's being kind of all weird and pushy but oh my god can you imagine having someone like lisa in your life imagine having someone like emma emma was probably like get me with your brother i love your brother but then lisa's that fucking crazy to say yo you don't want me destroying your life yeah well and the fact that lisa is and now going it. like you need to tell mike that you were lying right like tell mike that this you made all this up and you're a pathetic loser. It's like, she's only trying to do damage control with Mike because that's her relationship yeah. on the line. True. But I also like, I don't like how OP is like, I know I don't deserve him. I, I, I did an unthinkable thing. And I honestly, I don't agree with that. I think what she, she did. Do? She just believed the evidence she had in front of her. Oh. Which if when you did have, it all come together for her? When Lisa started ignoring her. So after she broke up her marriage, Lisa just dropped her like a hot potato. And uh, so at that point, it's like, well, if Lisa was doing this for me, why isn't Lisa still my friend? Well, because Lisa doesn't give a fuck about you. Damn. Lisa just wants her brother okay, together so what with happens her bestie. Because uh, Jamie's the husband, yeah? Yes. So what happens when they get together? Okay. So he told me that he was very hurt that I would doubt him like this and believe rumors. I told him everything again without panicking. I told him that I loved and trusted Lisa. She was like my sister. And I asked him to put himself in my shoes. And if it, ha and if he happened to hear Lisa talk about me being unfaithful, right. would he have had any doubts in his loving sister's intentions? He stayed the night and left the next morning. 
We've been texting several times a day and talking on the phone and FaceTime every night since. He says that he loves me, but that he doesn't know what to do. He is very hurt by his sister and Emma, of course, but even me. He hasn't talked about canceling the divorce process yet. I will just have to wait, and that's understandable. I've turned his life upside down twice and in such a short period of time. On a happier note, my husband's colleague and her husband are back together. My husband oh. met with them and apologized. I've already told them everything, but my husband felt the need to apologize personally. Mike has ended it with Lisa. Lisa and Emma's relationship is very strained. Both have blocked me from IG, of course, but apparently Lisa is blaming Emma for Mike leaving her. And Emma has tried to throw Lisa under the bus by telling Jamie she was innocent in all of this. Oh, wow. I really hope my husband forgives me and I promise that I will make it up to him and love him forever. There's obviously some problems, but it's hard to blame someone for reacting a certain way in certain situations. Yeah. And so you kind of, it's very tricky because was any real wrongdoing done by OP and her husband? No, I don't they're know. both innocent victims in this. Right, but then like, Obviously, the thought is, how could you believe that and whatever? And then put yourself in my shoes. It all makes sense. It does, because I would believe it if someone sent me photo, like good photoshopped pictures and I had no idea they were photoshopped of you making out with someone. I would 1000% believe it. You believe be what's in front Photoshop. of you or you just pay someone on Fiverr. That's true. I mean, I've paid someone on Fiverr, literally five or ten dollars to Photoshop a girl out of my picture. I think the only time I've ever done that in the past is um, you say, oh, well, I sent you the message on this day. Yeah. <laughs> like, I sent you a text. I sent you a reminder on this day. It's very manipulative because then this you can Photoshop the date and whatever. You can Photoshop everything. You change the name in your phone and you make it look like their text from the husband and colleague. Yeah. You can literally Photoshop anything nowadays. It's Well, it's and especially terrifying. with AI too. Have you seen the things on TikTok AI where it's like is paint crazy. this and this and this and this? I it's not long, especially with stuff in music. It's not long until voice recreation is like mastered. I mean, they already can do it. They're already doing that. They already can take snippets like a whole collection of someone's voice and then make new sentences with it. Well, so what they're doing with music is this one singer recorded a bunch of stuff and now you can almost use it like an auto-tune filter so you can sing in her voice they're R doing crazy stuff already so where does that end because what if you could uh manipulate really recreate someone's voice image video and you could literally say oh they posted this video on tiktok and it's like it's not even them well that's why deep fakes are so scary because that's essentially a deep fake that's why like you can have people like famous celebrities and you implant their face on another girl's during a porn video. And it's literally like, oh my God, it's Amelia Clark porn. And it's not Amelia Clark. It's a deep fake. It's, it's absolutely terrifying. It is scary because that terrifying. stuff's only going to get more like better. Yeah. But yeah, I, this situation is very tricky because I, I don't know if you carry a mistrust going forward. No, I would because the blame then is misplaced. But as the husband, imagine your sister doing this. And you know, I'm an only child, so I'll get myself as close to that as I can. Think like in my mind to have someone related to you manipulate that and basically break up your marriage. Which I mean, you, it would be like my brother coming to you with f pictures of me cheating. True. And your biggest fear is literally cheating. Well, so you like, would believe it wholeheartedly. Well, and he would be so convinced in his lie that it would seem supernatural. Exactly. Because he's acting like upset. Well, especially if he had an attention behind it. Like, uh, I want to hook sure. my sister up with my best friend. You're going to sell that so hard. I do not blame Opie oh, yeah. for Who believing fall this. For that? Who wouldn't? Who would not fall for this, especially with so much evidence pre presented? Yeah, this is fucked. This, this is, is <laughs> insanity. This. Oh. And what's scary is like anyone could do this and you could really go and fuck anyone's shit up. I know. Do you remember when there was that um, that app where you could send texts from other people's numbers? Yeah, it was like a ghost ghost text or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone in the chat will know. Yeah, ghost number. In the comments, like, um, 
That's so crazy too. I Ugh. remember that app and I remember having, there was a, a couple at our high school that broke up because someone sent like fucked up shit from the other person's number. Wow. So this is just like that. Yeah. But on a whole different level. So the top comment on the update is he doesn't believe Emma, right? That she was innocent and only Lisa was involved. Also, were they dating or just hanging out? And OP responded, no, he doesn't believe Emma. I sent him screenshots of hundreds of texts between Lisa and Emma. Also, he didn't like her hitting on him when he believed she was my friend too. Right. I asked him about the crush and he said it was when he was 15 or 16, not now. So, well, what an I, asshole. Is that the last update? As of right now, it looks like OP might have even deleted the account because the comments from OP are showing up as deleted. Oh, okay. And so another comment goes, so are these people going to just get away with attempting to ruin your life? Right. And OP goes, I really don't know. Since I found out everything, I've only thought of my husband and his colleague and their forgiveness. Not sure what legal action I could take against Lisa. The hard thing with Lisa, though, is... I wonder if you could. Yeah, but at the same time, a person goes to that length to try and do something like this. If they have a vengeance like against you forever, that's fucked. That's almost like... She's going to because she ruined... OP ruined Lisa's relationship with Mike. She's 100% going to. People that are capable of this devious, chaotic, psychotic, schemery shenanigans, <laughs> they're unhinged. She's for sure going to retaliate. For sure. It just honestly would make you want to move it just makes you want to i don't even know what you would do you have like this virus attached to you now it essentially but what do you do like that's your husband that's your person like oh. you're not going to leave it all behind just imagine because family sister's gatherings a bitch. like she's just in the corner you think Dude, she's plotting something at every moment like i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to eat at family gatherings around her i'd be f like fearful that she would poison me i would have to bring my own tupperware food Wow. So someone else wow. goes, marriage counseling might be a good idea if you both want this to work. And OP goes, I have suggested this. He just smiled at me because it was something that he suggested before our breakup. And I refused because at that time I thought nothing can fix infidelity. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of that movie again. Where, what it's, one? It, where you just can't believe anyone. You don't know what's true and what's not. What's reality yeah and what's been fabricated it's just a nightmare that's a literal nightmare when you start to question what like then the hard thing about that is when you have someone that manipulative you don't know what to trust at all anymore no because then anything that goes on in your life then what if some real infidelity happens or what if yeah, going it, it forward, could, it you would honestly, never believe. It honestly could be anything and you start to lose trust for any human. Yeah. Because then you're like, the only thing I know is that I trust myself and my thoughts and that's it. But when everyone around you, you start to question what their motives are, I don't know what could be worse. To not trust a single person. Your whole like radar and judgment would feel wrong. Yeah. Like your whole sense of perception almost of other people and like your faith in other people, everything, everything would be really, really challenging. What is the movie called though? I don't know why I'm blanking. Um, there is a movie with Beyonce in it. That's actually really, really good. And it's called obsessed. Uh, I mean the one we, um, the one that messed me up all mentally. <laughs> Are you talking about the, um, Austin land movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Justin. Austin land is not even that bad. You poor thing. Is, that's not like this. I mean, in a sense. Yeah. Things were a little off in that. Oh, I thought it was just like this, but I'll say it again. This story could be a movie. It could be a movie. Maybe we make it one because you're watching this movie and you could play out all these, you know, you could play out every part of the deception yeah. and viewers would just start getting like, Oh my God, no, what's happening. Yeah. I know. And then you could, I guess the this worst part. This reminds me of the, there's a movie with Beyonce and it's called Obsessed. And Beyonce is married to this like great guy. And he's got a secretary that comes in and starts working in his office. Mm -hmm. And the secretary makes it look like they're having an affair. 
because she's obsessed with the husband. Oh. And her and Beyonce have this showdown at the end and like kick the shit out of each other. Great movie. Great movie. See, and the worst part about this one is you could the end of the script could be kind of where the last update ended. Yeah. And you cut and it goes to credits and there's no resolution. Everyone's just like, what the fuck? I know. Just dude. It would be good. And then you have a part two. All right. I need a I need another story to redeem myself. Okay. Let me get let me give you an easier one. <laughs> Jeez. Am I the asshole for asking my stepsister which mom she is referring to during a heated argument? I'll keep it short. So basically, my 15 female stepsister, 13 female, has been living with us for almost a year after the death of her real mother. Ever since then, my parents have been very distant with me, almost like they forgot me. They always compliment her for literally anything, buy her more things than me because, quote, she scores higher grades at school and so on. Despite all of this, I tried my best to remain calm and show that I'm not really bothered by it but today is where I lost it. My friends and I have been planning a sleepover at one of my friends' house for today. The thing is, today is also my stepsister's birthday. Because of this, my parents are, all caps, forcing me to go out with them and cancel my sleepover plans. I was, of course, very angry. I do not want to celebrate her birthday. While I was arguing with my parents, my stepsister decided to step in and say, quote, I can do my sleepover plans tomorrow and that she wants me to be there with mom and dad. This is when I asked her which mother she's referring to. Now, both her birthday and my sleepover are canceled and I'm punished. Can't go out for a month. Do you guys think I was in the wrong here? Why should I be forced to spend time with them when I don't want to? My friend said I am in the right, but my parents obviously think otherwise, which is why I'm posting here. Wow. Okay. This sounds like this has been building up for a very long time. A year. It's been about a year since the little girl's mom passed. Okay. So it's not that long, but I guess at that age, you really latch on to kind of, you're not only finding your identity, but you are... You're looking for validation, I think, at the same time. And it's at that age, it's very, it's, I would say it's impossible not to compare yourself to other people, especially those that are living under the same roof and being treated differently than you. And a little bit reminds me of the story with the, the grandparents treating the, some children differently than the others that had lost their parents. Yeah, that was on a Father Knows Something episode and that we did. Oh, right. Okay. So, <sighs> There's times in these stories where people end up saying things that I do believe they will later regret. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've, I know what it feels like to be in those moments and try to control that. I mean, <laughs> you maybe it's something you've wanted to say for a while or it just, it crosses the line. It may feel satisfying in that one little moment, but really at the end, I think most of the time you would regret what you end up saying because it forever kind of draws a line. Yeah, well, and I think for this, like, obviously this is a very, very tough situation. Like this little girl lost her mom yeah. and now it's like, oh, she's been living with us for a year since her mom died. It's like, well, we're like OP writing that and just the whole way this was written, our writer is struggling clearly 100%. with this adjustment. But I think that's also part of the age because we can look at it from a perspective. I would not have been this big of an asshole at this age. No, but 15, I 15, you can almost drive a car. That is true. Like think about how you were at 16. Like I would not have acted like this. If my, st if my, st if, cause I look at it like this kind of too, where their step, children so it's a little different but like me and my brothers we all have different dads and if one of them lost their dad like I would never I don't know I just like I would never act this asshole-ish yeah I just think it's it's crazy to me and so I think it's hard though when you are younger and you kind of forget it's it's a lot you don't have the mental maturity so it's a lot harder to control your emotions yeah and you also can't really think about the true effects you'll have on someone from things you say because the way the the things that people say to each other in middle school and the way people treat each other in middle school early yeah. high school 
you don't realize what that does to some people and the effects it can have. It can ruin their lives. And so now, once you get a little older, yes, of course, not everyone is an asshole at that age, but I think there's a, there's a higher chance of inadvertently being an asshole because you truly don't realize the effects, but you need to be taught or... I guess in some instances, you kind of need to go through these experiences a little bit just for the pure fact that you need to see how this like affects people. I know, but why and does this little girl that already lost her mom need to be traumatized for no, this other girl to have it, personal growth? It's completely misguided. Like the, And this is where I think the parents did the two of them a disservice. They should have been put in family therapy, all of them, all together should have been in family therapy from the start of this transition to set them up for success, to put the little girl in a place where you're not being replaced as my daughter. I love you, but like she is also going through it. Can you imagine if you lost your mom, how well, no. devastated what? you would be? Like, yeah, it's this totally little misplaced. Girl needs, she's, I think she's very much so in the teenager stage of me, 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 me. It's all about me. Right. And that needs to be nipped in the bud. Like, absolutely. Grounded for a month? Fair. Absolute. Perfect punishment. Fuck you. Fuck your little friends that think you're not the asshole. Fuck all... Like, you sit your ass at home. Yeah. Easy. But I, yeah. they need to, like, rectify the situation by putting them in therapy and getting their family unit whole because they're not whole. And I get that that girl is struggling with... They treat her differently than me. She gets more stuff because she has better grades. But it's like, Okay, well, if she has better grades, then like that's that's the fact. She's also unable to put herself in that girl's shoes. She doesn't. She's There's like, no empathy. Here. She's just kind of like, oh, you lost your mom. She cool. is no way. She probably hasn't even lost a family member yet. No. I mean, right? And so, you don't know what that sense of loss could be, especially a parent. I mean, we don't even know what that feels like. So, no. To, of course, it's one hundred percent wrong. And yes, you are the asshole. It's just there needs to be some of this work through. And I think therapy could help lead to you being a little more empathetic and understanding yeah. what the effects of your words are, especially also understanding the amount of trauma this girl is experiencing. I mean, a year's, yeah. a year's fresh. It is really weird to me. And this is something like a thought that's come into my head recently. But is empathy something you can teach? Like, is empathy one of those personal traits that, like, you either have it or you don't? I mean... Because you can see little kids that automatically have empathy where, like, one of their friends is hurting and they give them their popsicle or whatever it is. Like, is empathy one of those things? That is a good point. I guess there are people probably our age that you can think of that look at situations so differently from you. I feel like we watch the same videos on TikTok and we'll both get that sense of, like that wash of emotion over us, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, whether it be an animal video or something, or even some of the happy videos that like it's happy tears. It's like, yeah. oh my God, that's so amazing. We find kind of the same emotional response in us. And there's definitely people probably that I can think of where you could show it to them and that you wouldn't get that sense of no. response. So you, that is an interesting point. I, know. I will just say too, I think this would have been a little different for me if she wouldn't have said, which mom are you referring to? Because it's like, you know what you were doing with that intention. You're, 100%. You're, she's insecure that she looks at her stepmom as like another mom kind of filling the the void of losing her mom. And so to use that comment, no shit, Sherlock. She's talking about right, but that's the whole your point. mom. Uh, one of the comments, I can't even find the post anymore. I'm like searching. So I'm just going off screenshots that I have. But one of the top comments at the time was, wow, yes, you're the asshole. Your friends are too. I get that teenagers can be self-centered, but Jesus Christ, her mom died. Show her some sympathy. And OP did go back and add an edit. Unless your judgment is different than you're the asshole, you can just stop commenting. Most of the you're the asshole comments are just saying the same thing anyway, so you can stop. If you think I'm an asshole, just downvote this post and move on with your day. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it plays right into it. It's the same. Yeah. You can tell it's the exact same vibe. I, I hope this is a wake up call for her. Well, some people like that don't change, though. Some people like that will never see it. So it goes back to whether that's 
learned or natural. I, I really don't know. I don't know either. Or, I mean, there's also the thought that maybe something like this could something some kind of thing happening in someone's life could change that something could happen to you that at a later age makes you empathetic and flips a switch i think that's definitely possible yeah but in this case i don't see this changing i don't either i think this little girl is going to be very stuck in her ways and i think this experience is probably going to cause her to resent her stepsister more true moving along You know about, you know, weddings and how you're not supposed to wear a white dress to someone else's wedding, right? Yeah. You know that whole thing? Yeah. I think I've become extra familiar with it since knowing you, though. Okay. Because I I don't know from, as a guy, if you're not really with someone, if you're not dating someone, it's not, you don't really think about it, to be honest. Yeah. You're just, you're not going to wear a white suit, right? Who would, like, who, who would wear a white suit? To someone else's wedding? Yeah, or really in general. I saw a video or a picture of someone that did recently. Like, didn't my dad wear kind of a white suit jacket to someone's wedding? Yeah, and we and we were both like, wait, what? We we're like, oh, you shouldn't have worn that. And you were like, that's kind of dicey. It's risky. It's a little <laughs> risky there. Okay, well, this next one, it's a wedding one. And uh, some bitch tried to wear white. Tried to. All right. <laughs> Am I the asshole for kicking my wife out of the car on the way to my friend's wedding after I discovered that she was wearing a white dress underneath her blue dress? I, male 33, have a close friend named Tom, male 34. He got married to his wife, Lauren, female 32, a few days ago. My wife, Hannah, female 30, has never gotten along with Lauren. There's no reason in particular, but Hannah claims that Lauren is full of herself and has fake beauty. I tried to get to the bottom of why they don't get along, but to no avail. When Hannah and I attended the engagement party, she and Lauren ended up getting into an argument because Hannah called Lauren controlling when Lauren jokingly said she picked Tom's suit for the occasion. We had to leave early, but Tom was incredibly understanding of the situation. We were invited to the wedding and Hannah casually showed me a white dress that she said she was going to wear. I snapped and told her that this dress was off limits, but she threw a fit saying I get zero say in what she should wear. I told her if I saw her wearing this dress, then I wouldn't take her with me to the wedding, period. She sulked, but then showed me a blue dress that she decided to wear to the wedding. Okay. I waited on her in the car while she was getting ready. She wore her blue dress like she said and had a jacket cover her upper body. As I was driving, I brought up the white dress issue and why I didn't agree on it seeing that it's not acceptable to wear white if you're not the bride. But she smiled and she said she will prove to me that it was perfectly all right to do that. I was puzzled. I looked at her and caught a glimpse of a white strap on her shoulder. I asked if she was wearing the white dress underneath the blue dress, and she denied it. I stopped the car and told her to take off the jacket. She refused, but I insisted. She took it off, and parts of the white dress were showing underneath the blue dress. Apparently, she was planning on taking off the blue dress when she got there, but I lost it on her and told her to get out of the car. She started arguing, but I didn't let her finish. I just told her that it was pathetic and repeatedly told her to get the fuck out. She got out crying and I ended up going to the wedding alone and she was waiting for me at home. When I got home, she started arguing again, calling me an asshole for kicking her out of the car, for making her miss the wedding and for trying to control what she wears. It got too much. I had to go upstairs and stay there. It's been days and she's been giving me the silent treatment and saying I cared more about Lauren's feelings than hers to treat her the way I did. Okay. You know how we always talk about you have your partner, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. Partner. Yeah. You have their back no matter what over anyone else's. Yep. So what does that say about this? It is innately wrong to wear white to a wedding especially when it's so pointed like this when people do it i mean there are people who kind of like do to do kind of forget whatever and wear white which whatever but this is or they wear a dress that like 
has a pattern on it, but it's still mostly white. But and they to them, just, it's not fully white, yeah, right? And they but, just don't understand that. But this is pointed. This is yeah. purposeful. And so, if if your spouse partner is doing something wrong, where do the lines fall? How far do you take this? Because, like in the show, Your Honor, dude's son kills somebody, and he jumps in even as a judge and starts hiding it because it's family. Family comes first. And I think that's a common thing. Like, oh, you know, I would help you through anything no matter what. Like, you're my kid. You're my spouse. You're my yeah. partner. I think the issue here is the fact that... Oh, you go on. Well, I think, yeah, it's the fact that it was like, it was pre-discussed. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then... It just doesn't make sense because now she's playing the card like, oh, you're supposed to have, you know, my best interest over anyone else's. Yeah. But is that a, even a valid argument? And no. Wh- and where does that, it, it's just like, where does the line get drawn? Because she can die on that hill, but from his perspective, it's like, hey, I'm just trying to go enjoy my close friend's wedding. Yeah, one of his besties. And so, of course, you don't want to be, it's just she should have, Worn the blue dress, sucked it up. Who cares if you don't like the bride? Just support yeah. your husband's interest in this wedding because it's one of his close friends. You don't get along with her, that's fine. Yeah. If you don't get along with her, then have the discussion with your husband like, hey, I don't love hanging out, all four of us. Why don't you go hang out with them or you and him go hang out or whatever the case may be. And it's just maybe better if I just, you know, I'd, I'd rather kind of not be a part of it. That's a different conversation than sucking it up for a wedding and just going. This is weird, though. With the Why hiding the dress. So, like, that's that's the thing. Why does she, one, have such a problem with Lauren? And I get not everyone is going to get along. Not everyone's going to be your best friend. Not everyone's your cup of tea. Right. Whatever. But at the same time, why is she so adamant about sabotaging Lauren's happiness? And, like, her the other guy's happiness, too. The, the dude's friend. Like... What is going on here? Also, Does she how could actually she- have a crush on him? And that's the problem? Like, what is going on here? Because no one does this. No one does this. Especially after having a conversation with your partner where he says, you're not going to the wedding with me if you wear white. That's end of end of discussion. <laughs> and, so she the, and she wears the dress. she wears the Under the dress. <laughs> under the dress. Lady. Oh, I was going to take it off right when I got there. I think the only the only thing you can fault him for is for just kicking her out of the car on the side of the road because people get kidnapped and that's kind of dangerous. Like he should have sure drive her back home. He should have turned around and driven her back home. But like otherwise, like not the asshole. Like she is being that is true. Though. A deceptive, crazy person. That is true. They both have a little bit of crazy because that is kind of a crazy move. But I but I also but I feel like at that point he was like. Like, girl, are you kidding me? I we've already talked about this. I know, but we've beyond... already discussed this, and you still went against our conversation. And you're wearing this white dress under, and she's trying to be sneaky about it. Yeah, and I, then to be right, like, I'll there's... show you. I'll wear white to the wedding and show you. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Right. There's a lot of deceit. I, there's. I don't know a situation I could ever think of where I would pull over somewhere that isn't you know it's if you're a couple blocks from home that's different but pull over any distance from home or anywhere normal and just say you have to get out of the car i just it's not the kind of person would you I am. bring me to a gas station at least no i'd probably bus station? i would probably get you home i would take you to a place where it's like it's i don't know but that's that's just my preference besides that okay the <laughs> just the type of crazy to want to go somewhere like a wedding wear white clearly everyone's going to know it's not like you're subtly just making this jab at no. the wife and at the, at the at the dude it's you are going to be the spotlight focus and i know that's probably your intention too absolutely to cause this trauma she wants to you, say fuck you lauren you in imagine, every way she can can you imagine standing there in that white dress and just being like hmm, how are you guys what's going on oh where's the bar i'm gonna grab a drink she's delusional can you imagine being comfortable knowing you're like the elephant in the room and 
But she That's wants just... to be. She wants to be the center of attention. She wants to ruin that Lauren girl's day in any way she can. And I'm going to be honest, I'm surprised she was still invited to the wedding after creating an issue and a fight at the engagement party or bridal shower or whatever it was. Well, like, that's just... are you kidding me? Instantly at that point, you'd be uninvited. If you're going to be dramatic and you're going to bitch at me. Also, I think it's a normal thing to be like, yeah, I picked out his suit. That's normal. Couples do that. Yeah. They give each other feedback on outfits, especially for wedding stuff. Like for our wedding, I'll go with you when you go try on suits and we'll pick it together. I don't think that's controlling at all. I think that's just like, Helping your person out. Yeah. Coming up with the best look for the day. What's it's, where, you're where's coordinating, the problem? Right? Like, like what's the problem? There isn't. It's problems are being created out so of nothing. That's why I'm like, does this girl what's the motive? like him? And she's pissed that he's getting married. Like, what the hell is going on here? Right. Because no one does this. Like, I would never be mad if your friend Austin and Hannah like put them in this situation or any of your friends. Like if you had a guy friend who was getting married to someone and I didn't like his partner, like, again, I wouldn't care. I would just be like in private to you. I'd be like, yeah, not my person, but like good for Austin. Yeah. Like glad Austin found his, his gal. Yeah. I would never go out of my way to then make that girl's life harder. You have to be a serious level of deranged to do that. Seriously. Yeah. It's, I don't have that in my blood. I don't have that. I'm going to go so far out of my way to make this, to ruin this in any situation, even if it's not a wedding, but it That's is crazy. interesting. The thought that, you know, because before the wedding, I guess there's always the potential that you could end up with that guy. There's, there's always the potential they could break up. You guys could, you all of a sudden break up because it's perfect timing. Oh my God, we're both heartbroken. Uh, let's console each other. Like there's always yeah. that thought. You can always find a path. Yeah. And as soon as there's marriage, it's a lot harder to Oh, it's signed, find sealed, and path. delivered, baby. Y yeah. At I mean, that point, you're breaking up a marriage versus, oh, we both broke up at exactly. the same time. How or, convenient. Or you're waiting for their marriage to fail, which is, you know. It's, That's a long game. It's less likely than a boyfriend-girlfriend situation or a fiance situation. It's a lot uh, longer of a process and a lot less likely for them to split if they make it to marriage. But <gasps> I didn't even realize they were married. I'm such a fucking idiot. They're married. They're not even dating. So it's interesting then when you start to think it's about his that. Wife. Right. So when that comes what? into play, you got to think there's some years there, right? I mean, there are the people that get married after six months and power to you, but when. There's yeah, a I think definite generally, commitment for sure. Yeah, there's definitely some years and you definitely, when you make the commitment for marriage, I think you are pretty certain that you know this person pretty damn well. Damn, I wonder if they had an affair before the other guy started dating Lauren. Maybe. Mm. But when you start to feel like you really know someone and then something like this happens, were there ever any signs beforehand? How do you get all like so far into where you're married to someone and then they start acting like this and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Can you imagine if that was the first time? I know because this is now, but you I, said that's a thing. People change after they get married. They sometimes. do because there's a certain level of security in that commitment, but yeah, true. But this is like, I, I literally, you guys, if you are not watching, I just like slunked in my chair because I feel so dumb that I missed that like key, important, crucial, pivotal detail that they were married to because this is now the most perplexing story I think I've read in a while to me. I'm like, what the hell is happening? So the top comment on this one, which is why I just realized this, is not the asshole. Is your wife usually this self-centered? And OP goes, no, she's not like that normally until Lauren right. came around. Ugh. It was like there's this constant and unexplainable tension between them. So could it be? Could what? I mean, it. I guess it could be that she doesn't have a crush on the dude. It could be she just resents this. She just girl hates that her much. fucking guts. It's also possible. Damn. I can't even imagine that level of contempt for another person. <laughs> right? So someone else goes, Do you feel like there was a shift in dynamics with the friend group? Was your wife the center of attention and that attention shifted to Lauren? I may be off base, but it sounds like a jealousy or envy issue if she's yeah. only like that with one person. I know it gets thrown around a lot, but would your wife be open to therapy? Her reactions were childish and therapy could help her process and communicate her emotions in a healthier way. 
And OP goes, actually, no. In fact, my wife started hanging out with the group less due to work. Lauren is the same way. They only show up when there's a formal occasion. Even in holidays or trips, the women let us men hang out without them because of work schedules. So interesting. Because then you start to think, well, I wonder if they had some weird interaction behind the scenes that the husband didn't know about or that either guy doesn't know about. Yeah. But then wouldn't you think you'd talk about that? Like, hey, tonight, like Lauren did this weird thing and like really pissed me off and whatever. It feels like you'd talk about something like that. I just that. feel so, like it's kind of like unspurred. I feel like this anger and like hate for Lauren is like coming out of nowhere. Yeah. And so someone comments like, I'm so curious about this. Why? Is Lauren beautiful in a way your wife is envious of? Does your wife have specific insecurities? The fake beauty comment is interesting. Does Lauren seem to have specific work done? If so, expect your wife to want those procedures soon. Oh, wow. If your wife is comparatively beautiful, ask yourself if she has mean girl tendencies or seeks validation through her looks. Anyways, you don't owe the internet anything, but there's something about Lauren that your wife is letting herself get drawn in by and it's revealing a lack of, and it's revealing a real lack of character. Yeah, that's interesting. OP goes, I think that by saying fake beauty, she means how Lauren wears extensions, eyelashes, nails, etc. And basically calling her fake for these things. But I can't for the life of me understand how it's any of her business. My sister is a pro makeup artist and uses extensions and all that stuff. But Hannah has never made a comment about it before. And Very someone interesting. Re- so someone responds to that. I'm going to ask the hard question. Is your wife in a Tom? Is that why she hates Lauren? Has your wife ever dated Tom? And so going back to it, I said OP added some more info. Info, Hannah was not like this before. It's like there's this unexplainable tension between her and Laura. I think he meant Lauren. Yeah. For those asking why I didn't take her home instead of leaving her on the side of the road, I have no defense to use here. I did it out of anger and that is why I'm asking for judgment. Yeah. Number three, for those who are saying that she has feelings for my friend, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'd like to know where you guys got this assumption. I'm just stunned that lots of people are thinking it. Maybe I'm missing something here. Well, you could. I mean, from a guy's perspective, it wasn't my first thought. And you latched onto it pretty quick. I just don't understand another reason to why she would be acting like this. Because no matter how much you hate someone, like it's not your partner. She's not really in your life. So why go to such extreme measures to like hate on her? Yeah. It's weird. I, I As soon as you said it, it kind of clicked in my head. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. It just feels really that makes, fitting. That makes sense because it, it it just seems a lot harder to get to the place of, oh, it just... I just don't like her. Yeah. But I feel like I'm honestly more worried about the camera right now than I was with the horses. Really? Because the wind? Yeah. Yeah, it's chaos. Because the the ponies, you like know when they're walking over there. I know. I think it's pretty locked in in that chair, though. I did a pretty good job. Yeah. It's, yeah. Good job, camera. Tripod bestie. <laughs> and the fact that a lot of people are on that as well. So many people. I, so many people in the comments. It just... it it. I wonder if I would have ever gotten there in my head as a guy. And maybe it's a guy thing, maybe it's not, but I do wonder. I think I think something's happening here and I think that might be it. The shoe fits. I'm just going to see if there's an update on this uh, account. So he did delete the post. And uh, in terms of updates, nothing. Nada. Nada. Zip zero. <sighs> crazy and i basically read every comment there's not any any additional comments that are worth uh, writing home about okay one last one for us here yes. and then we'll see you guys in iceland to the tower to the tower so this one is titled am i the asshole for refusing to let my husband's infertile friend name our son my husband male 33's best friend male 37 will is infertile. He got divorced two times because of it and because he lied to hide his infertility. And his life hasn't been the same since the day he was told he can't have kids. He has always had a soft spot for children. And when he found out that my husband and I are expecting, he was so thrilled and started buying us gifts and decor pieces that he made from his woodwork for the baby. My husband thinks that those are all nice gestures, but I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable, especially with how much he keeps mentioning the baby. A few days ago, my husband and I found the gender of the baby. 
The minute we told Will, he started calling the baby a random name he picked and was going to give his baby if he wasn't infertile. He then started begging us to use this name. And my husband said it was a quote, done deal. I refused, but my husband called me heartless and asked me to do this one small, nice gesture for his struggling friend to give him closure and honor him after all the things he has done for us. I flipped and said, it's my baby, not his. Will heard this and left immediately. My husband yelled at me saying, it's his baby too. And my behavior towards, towards Will is abhorrent. He left, <laughs> he left after him and didn't come back till the morning. Yeah. He kept saying the same thing and pressuring me to agree on the name, but I refused. Am I the asshole for choosing this hill to die on? No way. Bro, what is up with these people wanting relationships secretly with other people? This is weird. It's I feel his like his baby too. I feel no, but like the Will guy, I feel like Will and this lady's husband are using her as a surrogate. This is so weird. No one does this. Right, the fact that he said it's his baby too. What? Yeah, that was, that's where it's that's where it's a little weird. I do have sympathy for people who struggle with fertility and the ability to not you know it's probably it probably was a dream of his there's other options though you don't have to like hijack someone else's baby no of course not and that's where it becomes weird but i'm just saying i i have the sympathy absolutely and it is a very tough struggle and i can't imagine what that does to your mental space and we saw this we've seen this in other stories where people get really attached to someone else's kid and almost start to take it on as their own yeah and you you want it so bad that when someone close to you has it you almost start attaching yeah and you know that's where a line needs to be drawn from the husband yeah like dude i know <laughs> and it's not you and your friend versus your wife it's you and your wife making the call and it's like you're not gonna take your friend's opinion over your wife's i know because why is this even a consideration this is you and your wife's child this is your baby that you're gonna name because you're gonna have them in your life forever and it's like an honorary thing i think it's very cool to be able to name someone that's really cool and that's so crazy to like think about because names can determine like a lot yeah and yeah i think i think there's a lot of pressure when it comes to pick a name but i also think like if you overthink it you're gonna you're gonna want to call you're gonna want to pick 10 names <laughs> but the real thing here is um it was when we could do this one thing. This, this is the one, one thing we could do. Favor. And this is not this is not the thing. No. This helping your friend who has infertility issues is helping them figure out a solution to this, not you exactly. and your wife's kid becoming the solution. Yeah. Because that's just strange. You're gonna set up a weird relationship from the beginning. Absolutely. Because that's not gonna this doesn't end with just naming the kid. This this is like, oh, me and Boba are gonna take whatever the name is to to the zoo today and it's like the Where wife, more so they become a couple and will becomes a surrogate parent in a way and which, can you imagine it probably would turn out like that where he goes i want to make will our baby's godfather and then will is like oh this is my kid too because i'm his godfather well he definitely has some uh, a huge insecurity about it which anyone would because i think as a guy when you think about meeting someone you generally, generally in our society, you think, okay, I'm going to meet someone, you know, uh, get married and eventually have kids. Like that's kind of the, the motto, right? Yeah. And so from a guy's perspective, you start thinking, and this is probably why he hit it and ended up in divorces. And that's also furthered this, this mental yeah. down spiral he's in. But he lied about his infertility because there's know, people out there that are also struggling with the same thing no. and that would be willing to adopt that's, with him. Yes. but It's it, the lying. Yes, it is. Him. The lying is the, the fucked up thing. So that's a whole, that's a whole different thing in itself. But the, yeah, there's, there's no reason for the husband to pressure his wife Absolutely into this not. and it's just and people like people picked up on that and it's so uncomfortable like in her position it's like well 
okay, so now I'm starting to kind of question this whole deal because you're being really fucking weird, dude. Yeah. So someone goes and kind of like off the point that you're saying, not the asshole. Mom and dad have rights to name the baby. Nobody else. Mom doesn't like the name, doesn't get included in the list of potential names. Dad doesn't like the name, doesn't get included in the list of potential names. Why is your husband picking a friend over his wife? This should be your concern here. Also, your husband is the asshole. His friend needs therapy, not to pick baby names for closure. Your husband is actually a bad friend for entertaining this. And someone comments under, also make sure every nurse in that hospital when you give birth knows that the birth certificate doesn't get within 10 feet of your husband, not the asshole. Oh, that's so crazy too. Because you do have to consider that. That's so crazy. Top comment though was- And then you're like not on the same team anymore. No. Because then it's just like, okay, now I need to- Watch out for you hijacking our baby's name. Yeah, that's not cool. No, and that's the last thing you should have to consider after you just gave birth. You should be able to be comfortable, safe, and not feel on edge that your husband is going to sabotage you with a baby name you don't want and let his friend name your baby. Yeah. So- This is hilarious. So it goes, not the asshole. Is your husband also building his friend an art room in your house? Question mark. Right. Which there was a Reddit story a couple months ago now, probably, where this guy wrote in and he was married to this lady and (laughs) they had an extra room in their house and he was obsessed with his friend. And so he turned their extra room into an art room for his friend without asking his wife. Lo and behold, shit goes, uh, shit goes down and yeah. it comes out. He's in love with the best friend, yeah. which I haven't read that story yet, but now that I'm talking about it, I'm going to read it for Patreon. So we'll, okay. that one will be on our Patreon sometime this month. Yeah. I think really the thing here is it doesn't end with the name. This no. does not stop at the name. It's a, it's a lack of boundaries is the, the problem here. Correct. But the naming if that were allowed, you're opening the door. Can of worms. That's, an, that's the door opening. That Can is not, he is not going to be satisfied. You think the all of the mental just pain and stress that he's been going through with his infertility is all of a sudden you'd be solved by naming someone else's kid? No. You think that's going to like, it's, honestly, this is it might the make it one worse. thing. Exactly. It might make it worse because then he feels like he has such a personal connection to this child. Exactly. And in her case, opening that door will also change her life forever. Absolutely. Because it's going to also say to the husband, hey, I'm okay with you coming in and bulldozing me and getting your way. Because it's it's this is so much bigger than just naming the baby. I think that's like there's small little circumstances like that in relationships, marriages, partnerships, having a kid together where like your ability to compromise on things like a baby name or a house or what kind of dog you get. I think that says a lot because it is it is that skill of communication, compromising, yes. coming to an agreement and like. I think, yeah, this this whole thing, it's it might seem insignificant, but it definitely can open a big can of worms. Well, and that's why it's very important when you're starting to get serious with someone. Yeah. You start testing the waters before you get in too deep. Yeah. As in, you know, where would you like to live? Where do you want to end <laughs> up? What do you see your life looking like? Yeah. What do you think about pets? What do you think about kids? You need to have these conversations because by the time then, if you get to a kid and kids coming or house is purchased or uh my my moving truck is packed yeah and then you start trying to figure this stuff out no chance it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough road no chance i have to pee i'm very frazzled by these stories i feel like heated like we're we're actually off to the tower of london after this and i'm just gonna be like ranting because i'm just glad i got my my head screwed back yeah you you got your shit together there this this story gave you the chance Good now job, let's babe. get morgan to a place that she is going to love i'm so excited i think we need to go into the vault though take a shot of tequila the vault. walk across the bridge yeah and thanks again to the vault for hosting us this has been amazing like this view is this view is absolutely incredible big vibes big vibes the bar the restaurant the food everything unreal Um, so thanks guys. And we'll see you in Iceland. Yes. 
Welcome to the Blue Lagoon, you guys. We are filming from our hotel room at the Retreat Hotel, which is a part of the Blue Lagoon. And I definitely didn't fit in when we walked in here. It's like, <laughs> it's way too nice of a place. Like, they greet you at your car, take your luggage for you. Like, it's really crazy. And this is like a bucket list thing for me. So I did splurge a little, but you know, you gotta, you gotta treat yourself from, That's what life's from time about. to time. So this place kind of fits with our theme still where this whole place, the experience here has been jaw dropping. I mean, we've lived in these bathrobes we're wearing since we walked in the door. Yes. And we are, oh my God, they're so good. And we are going to have a really fun travel vlog from this whole entire trip. So I can't wait for you guys to see that. But let's get back to these uh, jaw-dropping stories. Okay. Okay. So this one is from Am I the Asshole? It's got a trigger warning for emotional abuse. The title is Am I the Asshole for Calling My Stepmother Delusional for Thinking I Would Change My Mind on Her Adopting Me. Okay. Fuck. My mom died when I was six years old. My dad ended up turning to one of his good friends, Anna, and they ended up getting married when I was seven. Anna brought up the idea of adopting me the day of the wedding. It was something my dad was all for, but I went nuts when she mentioned it to me, and I kind of spoiled the rest of the wedding. For the next year, we did this really intense therapy where I was told over and over again by the therapist and them that I needed a mom, that it would provide safety for me, and that it was not a betrayal of my mom to accept another loving mom into my life. The therapist put the recommendation into the court to approve it, but when the judge spoke to me, I told him that I would run away and that I would do everything to never come back. I was eight at the time, and I meant business. Damn. He asked me why I didn't want to be adopted. He listened, and when he addressed the court again, he denied the adoption request and told my dad and Anna that until I was on board, no adoption would be approved in his court. They did try again, requesting a different judge, but received the same response. I was asked constantly to change my mind. Anna would put her all into trying to fill the place of my mom in my life. Every time I told her she could never be my mom, she took it as a challenge to try harder and better, and she would dedicate so much time to me, it was crazy. I never appreciated it, because instead of just being Anna, and instead of my dad telling her to just be Anna— She saw mom as the only thing she wanted. Even when she had kids of her own, I was their oldest son. I was her son, her boy. She'd call herself boy mom, etc. Whereas I never called her mom. If we're being honest, I don't even love her at all after all these years. I see her as more of an intrusive family member who won't stop. My relationship with my dad is also not the best because I don't like that he wouldn't take no for an answer and that he was so quick to try and push for an adoption. Even after I told him I would rather be with grandparents or an aunt slash uncle or close family friend to Anna if he died, he insisted being with Anna and her being my mom was the best for me. I turned 18 a few months ago, and I ran like my ass was on fire to get away from dad and Anna. I lived with my maternal grandparents for a little while before moving in with my maternal uncle who lived near a really good apprenticeship I wanted. My paternal grandparents celebrated their wedding anniversary this past weekend, and I was there. While there, Anna approached me and handed me papers for an adult adoption. She told me she loved me and she wanted me to know it was not too late, that she would still adopt me, and she wanted to make our relationship official as mother and son. I asked her how she could be so delusional when I have said no to being adopted for 11 years now. I told her I would not change my mind. She and my dad were so pissed at my choice of words and chaos ensued at the party. Am I the asshole? Hell no. No. This person's psychotic. Well, like no means no. Right. And it's like... It's a complete sentence. From the beginning, all I could think was it's, it's really never going to happen unless they actually want it to happen. Yeah. It has to come from them because the continued effort the entire way is just pushing them further away. Well, I think like a lot of people don't understand, like as a step parent, you don't have to be their parent. And I don't know why this Anna lady is obsessed with like being mom. Like mom is just a label. It doesn't change 
like you being a motherly figure to that yeah, person, true. that little boy. Like and she already has kids. Well, or she now does. Like, she does now. But yeah. she's still like hooked on it. After he's 18. 18 and out of the house. Like he ran away at 18 to get away from her. And the relationship, if she would have maybe after the first time stopped, I think the relationship would have been totally different. Yeah. I think it was her insistence. Yeah. And Opie even said that. Opie was like, I don't even like her. She's an annoying family member that just won't stop. Yeah. She completely sabotaged the relationship for herself. Yeah. I just, it's amazing to me that some people can never take the hint. They never see, like, read the message. They just can't figure it out. Well, and his dad, too. Like, what a shitty yeah. dad to That's just be insistent and, like, oh my God, no, this is your mom. This is your mom. Anna's your mom. A year after his mom died. Yeah. They got married a year later. Asked to adopt him on their wedding day. Do you know how traumatic that is for a child? Well, I like how headstrong this person is, though. It's I know. It's like 18, they just dipped out. I mean, it's never going to change. That, no. That lady's never going to change. No. And I'm I'm really happy OP has other family members that are super supportive. Like he was able to go live with his grandparents and now his uncle. Yeah. I just think that is amazing to have because not every kid has that. Yeah. In that position, I would just continually get pushed away. Mm -hmm. It's not, It's like, how do you not realize that? You also as like, she's clearly got some years on him, right? And so to be much older, having gone through more life stages, how do you not in like at that age even realize, oh, I'm just going to keep pushing this person away. Sure, that might not be something you get when you're younger because you're like, you know, you haven't learned all that yet. But mm -hmm. when you're younger, you could do things and you don't realize that they're pushing people away. But by yeah. this age, you should be able to recognize signs. And kids, like, you could tell this person was certain in their decision from the beginning. They're not going to change. No, they said so they would run like, away. Oh, maybe they'll all grow it. Like, I'm trying to picture the conversations between the stepmom and the dad. Like, oh, maybe he'll just, he'll come around. I don't know. At How do you just get so blinded to it, you know? Well, the fact that they then went to another judge. They didn't get the answer they wanted. So they went to another judge. Still got trying the same answer. Trying to just force it. Trying to force it. Why, There's a though? comment. I don't know. I don't know why she's so stuck on it. Insecurity that she's not getting the mom label. If you had a bad judge and you put it through, could you then pull that back at 18? Yeah, I or think you could. Or do you, you need both parties to... No, I think you could change it if you wanted to. You could also become an emancipated minor and then you are your own decision maker. You don't have a parental guardian anymore. And well, could have. He, yeah, he could have. But if that still, would have been the case. It all... Now it's all like... I mean, everything's fine and dandy. The, the the problem with the, you know, having a strained relationship with your dad isn't fun, but no, having the freedom now to make your own choices and not be under, you know, forced under to be their under the roof. same roof. Yeah. yeah. So there's a comment that OP responds to and the comment says, her continued insistence all these years and the way she goes about it is sus as fuck. Is there a deeper and hidden reason for her insistence? What else does she stand to gain if you accept? Or lose if you refuse. Hold your ground, not the asshole. Yeah. And so OP goes, I think she loses the fantasy she had in her head. I feel like she wanted to be the stepmother people talk about as being the good example. The one who had such a good relationship that she adopted her stepkid. That mm -hmm. he loved her just as much, if not more, than his own mom who died. And that she was good enough to help me forget the pain of losing her. And that she was enough to make all that fade away into a neatly wrapped family. I also feel like she has issues with the being treated differently to my dad and my mom. Like she doesn't want to be less than. She wants to be the exact same. To have me love her the same and treat her the same. And for it to be again, wrapped in a perfect bow. Right. Um, someone goes, time to maybe have a discussion with your dad and set boundaries. If Anna can't respect this boundary, then she doesn't have a place in your life. Slash circle. And time for a serious one on one with your dad. 
on how much it's negatively affecting your relationship with him. If all fails, run at that point. OP goes, talking to my dad will do nothing. He does not see any of this as wrong and he won't back me in this. That's why I moved out as soon as I could and didn't speak to them in months. Makes sense. Yeah. Someone, um, which is like one of the most awarded, goes, I think you need to get a Mother's Day gift for Anna, a copy of the declaration by the courts that you have legally changed your last name to your late mother's maiden name, rotten flowers and dead rubber rat with a card written with thinking of you optional. Kind of like it. (laughs) Yeah. Jaw dropping for sure when she gets that gift, but this is not how you... It's almost like though with, with this type of person, it's almost harder for them if you don't play a card like that. If you don't put like obvious fighting words back, if you just simply move on, that's the hardest for these types of people to swallow. I don't know. I think that would, because she wants this perfect image. And so right now they probably have the same last name. So it's still like, oh, my stepson. I love the name change. I'm saying that's a great idea. I'm just saying the like. There's the move on after that. Well, I don't know. It depends. I mean, it's this person's choice for sure. Because that's definitely an option. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to uh, have a video when she opens it. I know. I would love to see it. It's just sad. OP does comment here too. If this last interaction doesn't stop them asking, then there will never be enough times. They will always try to find a way to bring it up. I could stop speaking to them for a decade and they would still ask me. It's so Even so without weird. saying what I did to her, we have not spoken in months. And that wasn't a good indicator of what I would say slash how I feel. Huh just crazy op comments a lot on this post so i'll try to put the link in the youtube description if i forget please just remind me my brain is probably going to be broken after traveling oh yeah but wow i'm really really happy op got out but sad 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 for him because i'm sure that was a very traumatic childhood and not not one he needed after losing his mom yeah and it sounds so quick when you just read it it sounds like, oh, you know, and then I turned 18, no, like whatever. But this has been you, years and years. You got to of- think about the day to day. Yeah. Like a year is a long time when you sit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when you think back on the last year, like it feels like it went by very quickly. But when you think about day after day after day, I mean, it's a long time. This has been going on since they were seven or eight. Yeah. So that's a long 10 years. It's a long time to get asked repeatedly. Again and again and again. Can I adopt you? Can I adopt you? Can well, there's I adopt probably you? so many instances we don't know about. Like it's, the, been, it's probably endless. Yeah. Well, at that point, it's like, is that like there was a trigger warning on this for emotional abuse? But like, yeah, that is abuse when someone says no and you continue to hammer on them and hammer on them. Emotional abuse. And then I everything- would say more like psychological abuse though, because. You're doing it again and again and again in hopes of getting a different answer. Mm -hmm. Just so, so messed up. Yeah. Okay. Just take the hint. Take the hint. Moving along. Am I the asshole for making my chronically late friend miss her seminar? My friend, 25 female, it's constantly late for everything. Be it work-related or fun activities, she will always be at least 15 to 20 minutes late. She does not have a car, and so oftentimes I, 25 male, will pick her up from her house. I work at a university, and she is a PhD student there, and her place is along the way for me. Last time I offered her a ride to work, she ended up being 20 minutes late after I've already arrived at her place. Because of that, I ended up being late for work. She's always very apologetic about her lateness, but never changes. This week, she was supposed to give a seminar at the university, which is a crucial part of her PhD program. She asked me if I could give her a ride to work that day. I told her, sure, but that I was picking her up at 8 a.m., and she must be there exactly at 8 a.m. and not a minute later. She chuckled, but I told her I wasn't joking, and she promised that she will be there. The morning of her seminar, I drove to her place and got there at 7.55 and texted her that I was there. And she told me that she would be out in just a minute. At 8, there was no indication that she would come out, and she didn't text anything. So, at 8.01, I drove off. (laughs) At around 8.20, she called me asking where I was. I told her I was at work, and that I wasn't joking when I told her 
that she had to be ready right that minute. She started screaming and crying over the phone and told me that she was having a hard time that morning, couldn't be ready at 8 a.m. She then begged me to come back to pick her up as her seminar is at 9 a.m. and she needed to be at the school before then. I could have done it quick enough to pick her up and drop her off without affecting my work, but I decided I didn't want to do that and told her that I won't. She was crying and hyperventilating at that point and said she'd promised to never be late for anything else again yeah, and reemphasized right. that this seminar was crucial for her PhD and that she absolutely cannot miss it without severe consequences. I responded, oh well, and hung up. And then I went about my day at work normally. I feel like I could have went back and picked her up in this scenario since it wouldn't have been detrimental to me. And at the same time, this was something very important for her. On the other hand, I feel like this should be a wake-up call for her chronic lateness. The end. Oh, wow. Um, I think it can be really frustrating when you have people that are very late, especially when you are very punctual. As in, you need to get somewhere at a certain time. So when you make it blatantly obvious, I need you here, I'm going to leave. Yeah, this was very clear. Then that's one thing. I do agree with the fact that if this was, you know, a very por important thing, you could have gone back, but also like, is there, it's 820 and it doesn't start till nine, how far away, if he could literally go back, get her and then come back in that time, mm -hmm. she's not far away from where she needs to go. Is there not Uber or anything? That's what I was and thinking. And is there also nobody else in the world to help? I'm not sure. And it's, so it's like, he made it very clear. So it's very fair. 801 is very like. <laughs> By the book. Send the message. But also but she didn't text him until 820 being like, hey, where are you? I feel like. That's 20 minutes. Well, and I don't know the dynamic, but I feel like I would have called at eight and said, listen, I have to go right now. Given her one final warning. Yeah. But I don't know because after years of dealing with it, I don't know what you do. It's hard to make a stand on a day where it's like critical for someone not to miss something. Yeah. But I feel like you kind of make this stand when it's like, oh, I'll pick you up and we're going to go meet everyone for a dinner get together or a birthday gathering or something. Then you just say, you know what? I had to go. I wasn't going to be late. And I think that's totally fair. Like if you are being generous enough to give someone a ride, stop, pick them up, give them a ride to where they need to go. They also need to kind of accommodate your schedule. Yeah. Like you're doing them a favor. So they can accommodate you more. Like I would never be like, oh, can you pick me up? And then, sorry, yeah, you're gonna have to wait 20 minutes. And then also I need to stop at the mall on the way. Like, mm, don't think so. Yeah. Like that's not how favors work. So get with the program. I think the fact that she didn't text him until 820. She didn't even realize. No. And so it's like he would have, if he would have waited that entire time, he would have been waiting there for over 25 minutes. 25 minutes when he said eight yeah and got there early at 755 to give her five minute warning yeah perfectly fair get your shit together yeah and i think some people need to be taught like lessons like this like she's learning the hard way now and also like i know how i was in grad school and on important days where i had like my dissertation like speech to kind of like present my capstone idea i was there like 6 a.m even though it wasn't till like nine like I am so anxious on big days that like I have to be the early and yeah. I know not everyone is like that. People are different. But at the same time, if you're a PhD student and this is a big step in your career, why are you not more prepared? Yeah. Why are you not making a greater effort to be ready at eight? 100%. And like the comments kind of like most of them said, not the asshole. Like you warned her. She had 40 minutes to make other arrangements, even after all her procrastination, which is true. Like call Uber. I'm sorry if you can't afford Uber, but you missed your ride. So if you couldn't afford Uber or arrangements like then that, be ready. be ready. But there's one comment that literally goes, everyone sucks here. For one, leaving if someone isn't immediately right on the dot on time is pretty extreme. You yes. at least wait five minutes. If a few extra minutes was going to kill you, you shouldn't have agreed to pick them up in the first place. 
Secondly, taking it upon yourself to teach someone a lesson at the worst possible time is pretty malicious. You could have left them behind to teach them a lesson literally any other time when it wouldn't have really mattered. But you chose this of all times just to really twist the knife. Right. Which is also true. But again, I'm going to go back to my thought where if this is an important day for her and something she's paid a lot of money to be a part of, a lot of time, sweat, tears. I'm sure she's cried a shit ton for this degree. Be fucking ready. Well, it's like, are you late to class every day? Maybe, probably. But at that point, like, I have ADD. I have terrible time management. I have a terrible sense of time. But I have started to, like, set alarms. Like, I'm like, oh, hey, Siri, set an alarm for 9 a.m. labeled Spotify call. And I'll, like, set a backup alarm. Spotify call alarm for 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you, my little baby. Like, Siri's my buddy. (laughs) Like, he is my best friend. I ask him what the temperature is. I mean, he is my buddy. I ask him where he is when I lose my phone. So use your technology to your advantage. Fucking don't be late. I hate people that think being late is like a cute personality trait. And we all run late from time to time. Like, you're going to be late from time to time. But there are people I know that are chronically late. Like, oh, okay, be here at 7. 9 p.m. rolls around and they're finally showing up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. (laughs) No. Seven means seven. Maybe 7.15. That's why you got to lie to people and just say, oh, it's starting at 6.30. It's actually starting at six. It's like that one USA Today story. That is like that write-in you got. Yeah. That was crazy. Okay. One last one here at the lagoon. Because they told them to show up. At, they told him like an hour earlier yeah, and it was then they the showed up thing. and were pissed that they were, uh-huh. it's like, I was going to be that I was going to prove it to them. And then they actually showed up on time for the first time ever. Yeah. And then they were then mad because they were told an earlier time. Which honestly, I get why they would be upset, but like it's a birthday dinner, grab a, a drink at the bar, yeah. like hang out. You're still with two other people. It was a group of three of them, I think. And it's like, this is what you get for always being late. Yeah. Your friends don't trust you anymore. Yeah. Don't be late. Okay. So one last one from the lagoon. Am I the asshole for asking my niece to babysit my daughter for an emergency? I got a call telling me my wife had had an accident and is in the hospital. I have a four-year-old daughter and I adopted my 12-year-old niece a few years ago after her parents died. I called every single one of our babysitters and none of them could come. I was in a hurry, so I asked my niece to look after my daughter until I came back. She refused, and we argued for a while. She yelled at me and said, I'm not your personal babysitter. I was so desperate and angry at the moment, so I yelled at her and told her, Yes, you are. That's why I adopted you. I truly regret what I said, and I know it was wrong, and I'm an asshole for saying this, but I was worried about my wife, and I had no other option. After that, she agreed to do this, and I left. On my way back, I knew she would be upset, so I bought her several gifts and snacks to apologize. She took them, and we seemed fine, but later I got a call from my sister telling me I'm an asshole. I know what I said was very wrong, but I don't think I'm an asshole for expecting her to help in an emergency. Right, but you, for what you said you are. Absolutely. Because that, again... A theme on this show is there's so many people that say things that you can never take back Mm -mm. and you can never make right again. Mm -mm. It's just that it doesn't matter what you're going through. You can't cross that line. It doesn't matter. I know, I, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to get that call and the freak out. Yeah. But there's still no situation where you can say that. No. Because it's also not true. Like, Ab- yeah, it's not it's true. Absolutely not true. And so it just absolutely. like, I don't know. Not true. No matter how flustered or crazy you can get just thinking, like going through some crazy stuff. It's just a line you can't cross. You got to have some sort of mind control a little bit to where when you're going through the most traumatic things, you still don't like cross a line like this because now this I mean I would never forget that no because you're scarred you're you're gonna point to that no matter what it doesn't matter what you're going through also she's probably like we don't know how her parents died 
but she could be having a lot of like trauma associated with like, oh, I got to go, blah, blah, blah. I got to call. Is in the hospital. There's an accident. Like that could be so triggering for her. And then to throw that in her face when, yeah, yeah you're stressed, you're hurt. But I think like you said, like the biggest thing here is that's not true. So to even like go above and beyond to cut at her so deep this doesn't make sense. with a lie, all you have to say is like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I know, I know you're not my babysitter, but clearly this is an emergency. I just need your help. I just need your help. Could you please watch little Sally for a couple hours? Yeah. Please talk to her. She's 12, not two. She's not Yeah. like incapable of understanding and empathizing. She's yeah, probably this, just scared. There's like no debate on this one. It's just clearly such a wrongdoing. I literally read it and I was like, a jaw dropped. Like, what the fuck yeah. is wrong with this dude? And the one of the top comments is, I wanted to start with not the asshole, but I was so desperate and angry at the moment. So I yelled and told her that, yes, you are. And that's why I adopted you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Not even in biggest fear and stress, you can say that to your child. Never, ever. Of course, you can ask her to be a babysitter in an emergency or else, which she is allowed to decline, but it's not her job to babysit your biological child just because she's older and you want this. You adopted her. She's your child too, not your slave. You're the asshole big time for screaming and what you said, and you fucked up the relationship with your niece as you call her. Maybe don't call her your niece. It's your daughter. So your daughter is more important than your niece. Did you really think gifts will repair this? She won't right. ever forget and forgive this. Poor girl lost her parents, got adopted, but is still just the niece and is always second place. And obviously your free babysitter for the future, which I don't necessarily agree with that comment with the fact like, oh, she's your daughter because we don't know what she wants. She might be, she might be exactly like our other OP that just wants familial figures in her life parental figures but doesn't want to be called your daughter doesn't want like you know what i mean yeah we don't like know her the parents dynamic. exactly so i don't necessarily agree with that like aspect of the comment but very like for the most part yeah mm -hmm. like it's your it's your kiddo at least it's your i wanted to say like your ward but that sounds like so formal it's like your she's your responsibility you agreed to love and take care of her. So don't treat her like a toy or a servant. Well, good luck with this one. I mean, you're not coming back from it. Yeah. OP does respond though and goes, she is my niece. She was nine when I adopted her. She will never see me as her dad. She is not second place. My wife even sometimes complains that I love her more than our own daughter. I was just very desperate at the moment. I, I get it's a crazy, crazy situation, but you just can't. You can't do that. Like, no. there's no way in my mind, at least as I'm sitting here in a row at a, at a resort, yeah. but I just can't imagine what I'd have to go through to say shit I don't mean and just like, like just fire off. I Well, something to that just regard. just not in my DNA. I mean, something to that extreme too is... That's what I mean. Yeah. It's, I mean, everyone's going to say shit they don't mean. Yeah, but exactly. But to, to that this level, level, this is a whole different... Mm -hmm. th there's no excuse. Yeah. Which also kind of makes you think like... it. You just want to know more now. You kind of want to more know if the there's dynamic. any other instances where this guy just pops off. Who knows? I don't know. But... I just don't think I could ever cross cross that. Yeah. Well, an OP says like she's never babysat before, but it was her nap time, so she wouldn't be so she would be asleep most of the time. Um but I None of that matters. No, and like I understand like OP goes here, I didn't know how bad my wife's situation is right. or how long I'll be gone. I couldn't take them with me like this. I thought she could babysit her for a while and one of the babysitters told me she would be free in a few hours. So if I wasn't back by then, then the babysitter would be there with them, which, hey, I had to babysit my little brother at like nine and that's definitely too young. But like in the case of an emergency, yeah, that's not where he's at fault here. It's a very, that's very understandable. 100%. But it's the fact that what he said to kind of manipulate her, because that's what the intention was. Because why else do you say something so hurtful? True. 
yeah. manipulation, uh-huh. guilt trip, whatever it was, but not okay. Yeah. But uh, that's where we leave you guys. I'm going to take this camera out side right now. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll get an amazing view of the lava fields that we're, we're looking at right now. They're actually 800 year old lava fields with moss covering them. And it takes 80 to 100 years for this moss to grow. So it's absolutely spectacular. And I'm really excited to show you outside. But other than that, we have our Spotify Live show down the rabbit hole, which is live every Tuesday on the Spotify Live app. So download that and follow us. It's really, really fun. And I love bringing people on stage and really interacting with you guys. And if you can't watch it live, it does drop on the regular Spotify app on Fridays. But Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Come join us. Love you. We'll see you there. Until next time, guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye.